All right, hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back to lesson five of the new study design for unit three, area study one for economics, where we're talking about microeconomics. We've just talked about the law of demand and the law of supply. And now we are going to get a little bit more in depth where we are then going ahead to look at what happens when you draw demand and supply on the same diagram and where they meet. And we call that an equilibrium. And we're going to learn all about that, how they're created, what it means when the price is set above them, below them, what happens when there's a shift and how you get to a new equilibrium, all these kind of wonderful things that you're going to need to know because it's always such a big part of the end of year exam for economics. So our key knowledge in this area is the effects of changes in supply and demand on equilibrium prices and quantity traded. Our learning intention as it has been all along is to understand how resources are allocated in Australia. And our success criteria today is that I can explain how new equilibriums are formed, I can draw how shifts in supply or demand impact equilibrium prices, and I can outline what is occurring in markets when the price is set above or below the equilibrium. So the equilibrium price in economics is the price and quantity where supply and demand are equal. So you can see that on the diagram, it is this point where supply and demand are equal. We call that PE and QE when you don't have the data. Sometimes you will have data, a table of data in a question, and I'll have prices and quantities, and you'll be able to tell because when um, we'll have quantity demand and quantity supplied and when they're equal, that's going to be your equilibrium price. So we care about it being the price and quantity where supply and demand are equal. Most of the time when you have to draw a diagram on a SAC or the exam, it will be um, a supply and demand diagram fully labeled with an equilibrium. So often these can vary between two and four marks. Most often they're going to be two marks now. And the things you need for that full two marks are the following. You need the title, the market for, you need both axes, so the prices and the quantity, and you want that quantity to have the units as well. You need the demand line with the D at the end, and you need the supply line with the S. I always like to mark the equilibrium point as well. So that is an extra thing you can do. Six things you need to do for two marks. It's really important to get your head across all of those. So when we look at the equilibrium, the price isn't always going to be set at the equilibrium price. So we're going to sometimes have a situation where the price may be set above the equilibrium and it creates a situation where supply exceeds demand. So you see here when we've got P1 and set above the equilibrium price, we have a situation where demand is at this point and supply is at this point. When there is more supply than demand, we call this a surplus, a glut or an oversupply. I usually just call it a surplus. Some people like to use the word glut because it's shorter and you're going to save time writing up to you, but when the um, selling price is set above the equilibrium, it will cause a surplus because there is more supply than demand. Often this will automatically sort itself out because if businesses realize they've got excess stock, they'll slowly begin discounting prices until you get back to that equilibrium point where the market clears. Then we've got when the price is set below the equilibrium price. So if we've got P1 down here, you're gonna see that supply is much less than demand. So demand exceeds supply in this situation. If demand exceeds supply, we call this a shortage or an undersupply because there's not going to be enough stock for how much the community or consumers are demanding. What happens in this instance is often consumers will then basically outbid each other and push up prices until you get up back to that equilibrium point. So when the price is set below the equilibrium, it will cause a shortage. Where things get the most tricky is when we need to talk about how new equilibriums are created. So we're gonna look at this for demand for two situations, and then we're also gonna talk about it for supply. But one of two things happen when there is a shift in demand or supply, and it follows the same path to get to the new equilibrium. So it's really, really important that you follow that path. So in this instance, we've had a favorable shift in demand. Initially, when there's a favorable shift in demand, there's a higher quantity demanded at the same price. So you can see here, we've moved from the initial equilibrium over here, over to the point, the price is the same, but there's more quantity demanded at the same price. So we've got QD1 and we've got the initial QD here. What that means is that we are now below what will become the new equilibrium point because the new equilibrium point is up here. So this caused a, sh caused a shortage because supply is still at the original equilibrium and demand is at the new um, point for demand because of the favorable shift. Then this creates a shortage. Consumers begin to bid up prices until you reach that new equilibrium price. 
at a higher price overall. So it's really, really important when there is a favorable shift in demand, or this also occurs when there is an unfavorable shift in supply, it causes a shortage and consumers then begin to bid up prices until a new equilibrium is formed at a higher price. Then we have an unfavorable shift of demand. So when there is an unfavorable shift of demand, what is going to happen is that there is now less demanded at the same price. So if we've got QD1 and QD2, you can see there's less demand at the same price. So this creates a surplus because you can now see that demand is less than supply and that means we are above the equilibrium point. So then businesses start to discount stock until it clears excess stock until that new equilibrium is formed. So a surplus occurs. This is also what occurs when there is a favorable shift in supply. So if we were to draw that in, that's gonna look like this. So if we were to pretend that the D2 line is not there and look at the initial lines that we have, if we were to have a favorable shift in supply, you would see that at the same point, there is now more supplied, but demand is still at the same point. And so it creates a situation where there's more supply than demand, and we need to discount prices to get to that new equilibrium point. So when there's a favorable shift in supply, it creates a surplus. When there's an unfavorable shift in supply, it causes a shortage. So it's really, really important when talking about creating new equilibriums that you follow that step-by-step -step process. You talk about if there is more or less supply at the same price, you talk about if a shortage or a surplus is occurring, and then you talk about either consumers bidding up prices or businesses discounting prices to clear off excess stock. If you can do that, you are going to get the questions right every single time. And that's it for creating new equilibriums and everything about equilibriums. If you have any questions at all, do not hesitate to leave a comment below or send me an email, sean at therunningeconomy.com. Next up, we're gonna move into a trickier territory of elasticity of supply and demand. So feel free to check that out next for lesson six. Other than that, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Goodbye.